Hey, welcome to the Best of AI YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to do a weekly recap of all of the great things that have happened in the AI world. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the news that we release, as well as how to's, features, and interviews. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to bring your attention to is Stack Overflow. Now, when ChatGPT first released, it was amazing to see that it could actually code alongside you. And some people are questioning, wait, what happened to Stack Overflow? Stack Overflow is a website where you can go and find out different things when it comes to coding. So if you have a question, you can say, hey, how do I do this? And someone will reply. It's basically a forum, right? But with the introduction of ChatGPT, some people are saying, hey, we don't need Stack Overflow anymore. We can just use ChatGPT. But Stack Overflow has come back and they released their own AI and it's called Overflow AI. And what they intend to do is basically take all of the knowledge that they have on their forum and all the responses and the questions that people have contributed to the platform and basically basically train their own AI model based on those discussions. In addition to that, now that they have this AI model, what they can do is update their search functionality, which is really interesting. So basically, if someone searches, how do I change the color of this text to red using CSS, they're going to be able to quickly identify the best resources for you via search. So no longer will you have to go and like find the form, find the best response. It will literally give you it because it trained the AI model to do so. And of course, you can go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, how do I change the text to red using CSS? But you can also use Stack Overflow, especially if you're used to using that forum as a platform to find the answers and contribute to the discussions when it comes to coding. And one other interesting component to this whole Overflow AI thing is they actually introduced a coding component to code alongside you using the Stack Overflow AI. So now if you're coding, you can actually use Overflow AI within the studio while you're coding. Speaking of platforms introducing AI, Shopify just released their own AI functionality. So they have what they call Shopify magic. And what this will do is it will auto generate FAQs for you. So as customers inquiries come in, you can actually automatically create these FAQs so that the next person, if they have the same question, they can easily get an answer without having to go through support or go, you know, searching through your website, which could potentially reduce conversions. This feature also will allow you to create emails, blog posts, all from inquiries. It's really, really cool. They've also introduced what they call their sidekick, which is another AI functionality. And all of these AI assisted tools should help you if you're in e-commerce sell more product because you have something alongside you working with you. These tools are not available to the public just yet. However, Shopify has stated that it will be available very soon. LinkedIn has also introduced some AI functionality to their platform, which is really interesting. So what they want to do is release something called LinkedIn Coach. It's basically a way for users to build out resumes really nicely, really easily. So you don't have to go out of your way and do that on your own. LinkedIn coach will help you when it comes to that process, especially when you're applying for jobs that may be a bit difficult when it comes to the resume creation process. It also intends to help you learn new skills. So for example, if you're applying to a job and you need a specific skill set, it will help you learn that skill set so that when you apply to that job, you have a better chance of getting it. And just like Shopify and just like Stack Overflow, LinkedIn plans to use all the queries on its site to train the AI models. And this is actually an interesting distinction because one could say, hey, like we don't want you to use our data to train the model, but if you're improving the platform and making it easier for users, then it may be okay, right? But that's just something that the platform and the users will have to have that discussion when it comes to that time. But in our opinion, I think it makes sense. I think if you're using what is already on the platforms to actually make the platform better, then why not, right? Let us know in the comments what you think about platforms using the data that's on the platform from their users. We really want to know what you think. And on to the next topic. Speaking of community, there's a bit of drama in the graphics AI community where there was was an oust of the head designer from Stability AI. Greg Wachowski, who is an artist, wants no association when it comes to digital art, specifically digital art that has been created by AI. However, the AI community has disregarded all of his requests and continued to use his art for AI graphic creation. A lot of artists are protesting against AI platforms, and in this case, Greg is having a bit of drama with Stability AI Stable Diffusion, and that community is basically saying, hey, like, this is what is new. Like, we're going to actually just take inspiration from your art and create new art from that art that you have created. And honestly, if you think about just in general terms, a lot of art, a lot of things that happen in the world are just recreations of an original piece, right? So one can make the argument that, hey, what's happening in the graphics AI community isn't too far from what happens in the real world where people actually see something and then say, hey, I like that. I'm going to actually combine it with this and this and this. We're going to make something new. Now, this is really an interesting 
interesting story. So some scientists are using AI to actually find different DNA from Neanderthals. They're actually using new AI models to find different DNA components that weren't able to be found previously without AI. And why this is really important is because they can actually see what antibiotics could work based off different bacteria that were found back then. So what they did was basically train the AI model to find certain proteins in these people. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to claim that I know what I'm talking about here, but I do believe that it's pretty interesting to note that we can actually take modern technology like AI and actually reference things that happened eons ago and actually make a better scenario for us right now now and for the future it's pretty cool now i want to turn gears i want to talk about investing because honestly ai has seen a super super increase in investment resources and it makes sense ai is in a hype cycle right now so people want to actually put money in projects that have huge potential and i think one sector of ai that is going to see way more money is security protect ai has recently raised 35 million dollars for their ai security startup with the increase of people using ai you can imagine that we're going to see a lot of security risk and protect ai aims to build a company that helps with protecting not only us but companies from bad actors using ai and just like protect ai there's another company called cyclops who just raised 65 million dollars and what they do is they consolidate data from across different vendors and they maximize the investment on the tool that that company is using. So it really helps to really keep an eye on what's being used in your company. Now, speaking of security, Sam Altman, who is one of the co-founders of OpenAI, which is who actually owns ChatGPT, has created this new thing called WorldCoin. Follow me here. It's a bit weird. What he wants to do is basically create a currency that is tied to the human connection. What that means is it validates that you're human using a technology like a camera and it uses the technology to see into your eye and validate that you're actually human which is really interesting just because you have ai which is non-human and then humans who are using ai so he's essentially saying i'm going to build this company that's for non-humans but then i'm going to build a second company that's for humans and we're going to use them together however there's a lot of backlash when it comes to worldcoin because it is a bit weird to have a company have all your biometric data just stored in a database somewhere in the european union has started to investigate WorldCoin because there are some security risks here. They're like, hey, you got to slow down. This is a bit weird. We need to see what's going on. And I can imagine that this is going to spark some other investigations as far as what they're using that data for and what's the real purpose. If you've been watching the news, Hollywood has been on strike and they continue to go on strike because one, they want to get paid more, but two, they want to make sure that AI is not seen as human when it comes to writing. However, as this strike prolongs, companies don't have new content to push out into the world, which means that they'll have to do reruns so no new content will come out and that's going to cause a decline especially for streaming services netflix has actually combated this with offering a nine hundred thousand dollar a year ai position now this product manager will make nine hundred thousand dollars a year basically use ai within netflix to create different content pieces and as you can imagine this is sparking fear in writers because if a big studio like netflix is hiring an ai position you can imagine that other students will follow suit especially as the strike prolongs and they don't have new content to rely on so so this can actually spark a regulation frenzy because hey if netflix is hiring a nine hundred thousand dollar position you're gonna have a lot of writers out of jobs and those writers most likely will start going to congress they will start going up the chain when it comes to legalities so we're paying attention to the story very closely it might be a good time to start learning prompting who knows that's it for this week's weekly recap if you like what you saw today make sure you go to bestofai.com and see the latest news tips, prompts, strategies that you can use in your business using AI. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter and hit that little subscribe button on your screen right now. And if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you want to see more news stories just like this one. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.